Welcome to the new Beverly Cinema, everybody. Hello. My name's Brian. Hi, Brian. <laughs> Let's do it. I've had the privilege of hosting a bunch of events here at the theater, and I asked Michael Torgan to program a movie to celebrate my birthday, my 40th birthday. And I gave him a very short list of movies, and summer school was number one on the list, and here we are. I've loved this movie since I saw it as a kid. My friends and I quoted it endlessly. And uh, I never imagined as a 14-year-old kid in Chicago that I'd be up here with half the cast of the movie celebrating it all these years later. The only reason I'm able to do that is because of Michael Torgan, the owner of the New Beverly. So thank you, Michael! Yeah. And now I want to introduce all these wonderful people. So we have Robin Thomas. Dean Cameron. Richard Stephen Horvitz. Ken Olant. Patrick Laberto. Fabiana Udenio. And Gary Riley. I love this movie so much that my cousin and I memorized Chainsaw Dave's review of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and I still know it. Let's hear it. Really? Yes. Can I do it? It's only 100 words. Who thinks I'll choke? All right. I love this film. It had passion and a plucky spirit, and the characters had integrity. Like when Leatherface went on that strict diet of human flesh, he had to cut out chicken and fish completely. <laughs> Dave, I agree with you. I'll go a step further. Sure, Leatherface wore a mask made of human skin and hung people on meat hooks. But hey, we've all got our quirks. I've got them. You've got them, Dave. That's what makes these characters so, so compelling. Thumbs up for me. Same here. Until next time, I'm Chainsaw, and I'm Dave, and we'll see you nice. at the movie. Yeah. So, speaking of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which has a prominent role in this movie, I can't imagine Carl Reiner having seen Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Just that image kills me. Does anyone know if he had seen it? Well, that's an interesting story, because actually in the script, the movie that we were supposed to be into was Freaks. And, and there was this really nice sort of parallel between the movie Freaks and us being Freaks in the movie. But Carl Reiner saw the movie Freaks, and went, that movie is too fucking weird. <laughs> so exact words. It was, it was exact words. And then, so he said, let's make it Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Much to the writer's chagrin. Who didn't want that. And I also was like, no, it has to be Freaks because of the parallel. Wow. So who here had seen Texas Chainsaw Massacre before? Yeah, before the movie. A few of you? Was there a screening for the cast and crew? No. No? no. Just the scene that's in the movie. Just the scene, yeah. Yeah, just the clip. So talk about casting on this movie. How did you, do you have any good casting stories, anyone? Um, I was the last, I think I was the last on board because they were having trouble uh, casting the nerd. Was that, because I was what? It was supposed to be a Jew. Right! That's right. <laughs> Since I was only half Jew, it took me a while. No, it, was all, it, was all, it was all Jew jokes. Yes, that's true. Right, it's yeah. true, and Ekin is actually an Armenian name. Right. Yeah. So, um... It was Goldberg. It was Goldberg. It was Goldbergian. Um, but, uh... I'm I, serious, I, they're not. Yeah, he is serious. I went, uh, I went in, and they, and you guys had already, most of you had already been cast, and, and they were still looking for this character, and I went in on literally a Friday afternoon. I read with Carl immediately. Penny um, Perry. Penny Perry casting, and I read with him immediately, and he said, you're perfect, go on, get out of here, it's yours. And, that, and literally, I've never gotten a job that fast and that quickly. And, and I was, 
you guys all rehearsed for a week before I got right. there because I was in another, I was doing a show and I couldn't get out of my contract. And so then you guys had rehearsed for an entire week before I had ever gotten there to yeah. rehearse. <laughs> Yeah, we are. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and, and Fabiana was supposed to be Swedish, too, right? I was supposed to be Danish. Danish, right. right, right, right. Yes. Yeah. I didn't read the script. <laughs> Mine was similar to Richard's in that uh, I had to come in and say, like, the, the dialogue of if you knew then what, what I know now, right? And then uh, he wanted to see me kind of dance. So I started stripping. Privately. Yeah, right. <laughs> Not Carl. Oh, Penny. But, but Penny Perry, Perry was the casting, and, and so you had to kind of do that little snake thing where he goes, oh, okay, great, thanks. That was beautiful. That was it. And that was the same kind of thing. That was the first shot of the whole movie, Ken having to do this Chippendale thing. What a pressure. Yeah, that's right. That was the first, first day of shooting. Right? First day of it shooting. was the first day of shooting? Uh, first day of shooting was... No, it wasn't the first yeah, shot. Was it? The first shot. The very first shot. Oh, it wasn't. Oh, my God. Not of the movie. The actual shooting schedule. It was the first. Shot. Oh, that's you're right, Gary. Yeah, yeah. The whole that was the whole, greatest shot in the world. Did you? Lowlands, bare buns. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you're getting paid to have women paw at you. You know, that's, that was pretty awesome. <laughs> I think we have another mic down there by Patrick. And there's maybe that's why. Yeah. For my, it was interesting. <laughs> Dean and I, Dean and I, had done a movie called a, a TV movie called uh, Prince of Bel Air with Mark Harmon. And, and Kirstie Alley. And, and, exactly. Yes. And Kirstie Alley. And I get a call from Mark saying, I'm doing this movie summer school and I want you to come in to audition. And I came into audition, but I auditioned for the part of Larry Casamayas. Kiss my ass. Kiss my ass. So I read and they were impressed. And then I danced and they said, you'd be a great football player. <laughs> and that's, that's the truth. Wow. That's funny. I, uh, wow. I uh, I had done the the I had been elected to play the part of Jeff Spicoli in the television version of Fast Times, <laughs> which was directed by Amy Heckerling, who at that time was in development with a movie called Summer School at Paramount, and so she wanted these two other guys who were in Fast Times, Patrick Dempsey and Wally Langham, to be Chainsaw and Dave. Wow. And I was going, what what about I'd like to do a movie. <laughs> So then, uh, Is that how that works? Yeah, I like to do it. I like, I like, so then, <laughs> the movie that Carl Reiner was directing at Paramount got shelved and they offered him any movies, so he picked, fortunately, Summer School. So Amy was out, as were Patrick and Wally, and so then they auditioned and, and uh, I got the gig. And I read with the guy from, uh, from E.T., Henry Thomas, Henry for Thomas. Gary, and then I read with Gary, and, and we were like, Is that right? Yeah. Did you read with E.T.? No, no he, was, he was offer only. <laughs> Henry, Robin? Henry, Henry Thomas was in that movie, uh, Last Days, right? The Gus Van Sant film? No, I didn't. Yeah, wasn't he? In East was Henry Thomas in Last Days? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Robin, do you have a casting story? I, mine's not, I, I don't know, I have a casting story. So I, I, was, I just came out here from New York, um, and I was uh, kind of new, and, and I... I got this uh, audition, my agent said, well, you're gonna audition for this movie called Summer School and you're gonna read with uh, Mark Harmon and, uh, and Carl Reiner. And I went, uh, okay, okay, okay. And I had one suit. I had uh, an Armani suit. I was, you know, from New York. So I nice. had this Armani suit. Yeah, it was nice, yeah, it was a great suit. It was the one suit I had. And so I, I go in and, uh, uh, you know, you know, you know, Gills, you know, you know, yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, uh, uh, I just, I just said, well, I don't, you know, I don't know what I'm doing. So I just went in and here's Mark Harmon here, who was a big star in my, my eyes. He was this big star. And there's Carl Reiner, who was like, you know, an icon to me. And I go in and it's just the three of us. And so Carl, Carl says, well, here, read, read the scene. And then I read the scene. He said, okay, well, like, why don't you improv with, with Mark? Just, just do an improv with Mark. And uh, so I started improving, and basically I was the only one talking. Mark, Mark was just sort of like, you know, just, you know, just nodding his head like that, and, like that, and I, that was it. And then Carl said, very similar to, to, to Richard's, he said, yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah, you got it, you got it, that's it, that's it. So I went, whoa, man. And that was, that's all I got cast, so. Not funny, but you know. I had, I had to wait a, a, I, don't know, I don't know how funny Gills was either, so, you know. <laughs> I had to wait a month before I, they really? closed everything. And I actually ran into the producer at a 7-Eleven, and he... And, 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 ran into him, right? No, I did. I, I, 
George Shapiro. Oh, George. And he uh, and he goes, I really hope this works out. I go, hope it works out. And he, Fuck. <laughs> Next question. So tell me about working with Carl Reiner. Great. When he was sober <laughs> and not bumming heroin from us, he was great. Uh, the, the only problem with working with Carl Reiner was when he would talk, tell stories about his friends and he's going, uh, Dick, that's Dick Van Dyke he's talking about. That's Mel Brooks he's talking about. It's, it's really, it was amazing. So yeah, I had this friend and we used to do these, this TV show. I'm like, that's a Dick Van Dyke show. That was great. He was... What I, you know, we were kind of spoiled because we were young and, it, and we were working on an A-level picture. Well, we, at the time, we, you know, um, with, uh, for Paramount, directed by Carl Reiner. So Carl, you know, other than the night shoots that we had, you know, we were in at six in the morning at the earliest, I think my call time ever right. was, was six. And we were out by six, six o'clock because yeah. he wanted to go home and have dinner with his family. So we were really spoiled in that respect. But what was great was if we were improvising something off the set, like we were playing um, Simon Says or football, he'd say, that's great, let's, let's shoot that. And so we had the luxury of, you know, Paramount's budget that allowed us to shoot him. Literally, Carl told us at, at, at our, um, screening of it at Paramount when, he, when it was first uh, finished, he said, uh, you know, a lot of the stuff you guys did, we had to cut over two hours out of the film because of all the extra stuff we shot. But he was, you know, he, you know, if he thought something was funny because we were improvising. There's a scene you guys may not know or where, actually it's where they, they remove Rich from a seat, right, for Fabiana? Yeah, that's a good one. And, and, and what happens is, is after that bit, Rich breaks into the Hulk scene, and he incredible. goes, <sighs> and he starts turning around, right, the cameras are running, and he breaks into this Hulk, and he goes, sit down, he goes, right. okay. shot, shot that whole bit, but that was improv, that wasn't scripted, and that was the cool thing about Carl, he would, yeah. he would, he saw something flowing, he let it happen, right? Yeah, well, you know, we were all, we were all young, and we were all young, and we wanted young. to be young, and we wanted er. to be, we were all like jockeying for Chinese. position, and we were like on our game, so we were all improvising a lot, and you know, trying to get <laughs> in the movie. <laughs> yeah. was, another, another cool thing that Carl did was that, when, uh, you know, he, he would actually get up and sort of like join in, he would, he would act, he, yeah. he, he was, when he was directing, he, he'd just get in there and do his thing, and it was like, I, I would just kind of like sit back and watch him yeah. you know, just do his thing. I mean, because he was, he's brilliant. And it was, that, that was such a treat. Because he, he wore white. Every he's day. a performer. His tennis, tennis white. Yeah, yeah, he wore a tennis, tennis, tennis outfit yeah. every day. Yeah. He always came from the court. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. And also, the, we shut the movie over Halloween. So during Halloween, it was a kind of a contest where all the departments would compete in costumes. Obviously, props are going to kick butt because they've got everything, right? <laughs> but that was one of the nicest things was that during that Halloween, then we had Carl brought in mariachi bands to play. Uh, we circled the wagons for the, for the food, and it was just a real celebration. You don't find that uh, much in the movie business because of budget issues. You know, it's usually spent other directions, but he really put back into his crew. Made, he made working fun. Everybody yeah. was... Yeah, well. I totally spoiled. Was, I don't know about you. It was my first movie and it's never been like that ever again. <laughs> if you can believe that on ski school yeah. was. Not... <laughs> there, there was this one shot where uh, Courtney is looking out the window because she's supposed to be, you know, yearning for the the surf, and we had a case of the giggles. Do you remember this? She got mad at us because. Dean was laughing, I was laughing, you started laughing, Mark started laughing, and they had to keep calling cut. And she was getting so angry at us because she just has this look, but you know, she had to be yearning. 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 And we just kept laughing, and finally when they called cut, we all ran off to our, our dressing rooms. We ran, ran away, and Carl came out and goes, you have been very naughty boys. You've been very naughty. Very, very naughty. <laughs>